Hi, this is Passy's World of ICT, and welcome to part one of our car driving game. In this game, you use the up arrow to set a speed, and then the left and right arrows to turn. Uh, when you hit the grass, the car slows down dramatically, and it's all about getting lap times. And I find it best to kind of have a drive around and then increase the speed a bit and see how you go. Um, the thing is, if the car is driven too fast, I'll just show you this. No, I won't show you this because I just crashed. If the car is driven spacebar for brakes, um, see there where I, if you accelerate too hard, the car reaches maximum speed and leaves a black skid mark. Okay? Now, once the car, I find for me, I'm not a great driver, once the car gets over a speed of three, I find it very hard to drive. All right, so this is um, part one, the first stage of our tutorial. So let's go into um, Scratch and see how this is made. First, we'll have a look at the stage. And you can see here, there's not much here. We're setting some variables, lap time to zero, and the laps, number of laps we've done to zero at the start of that. All right, in the background, uh, we have our own image here, which we made. And we'll just quickly um, show you in Fireworks how we made that, if we go across to Adobe Fireworks. We use the Bezier Curves tool to make this first prototype track, and that tool's over here on the pen tool. Now, we'll have a link in our website. If you go to the YouTube details, you can get a link to the website with full details about part one of this car racing game. We'll have a thing in there, a link to a, um, a thing you can look at for Bezier Curves for Fireworks. So we draw that basically using a really thick pen size of 97 there. What we did after that, if we go to the layers here on the right hand side and just click these um, eyes to open up, we got a map of Australia we found on the internet and fixed up. We put in some text and then we found our track was too hard to race on. So we added geometric shapes, rectangles and circles and just kept playing around with them and getting people to play the game and see how it was until we had um, this as our final track here which is the one in part one of the game so the thing is that um, you then need to save this as a PNG file to keep the layers but then to get all the layers flattened out and reduce the size save it as a JPEG file the one other thing is that this document size was set as um, 480 by 360 which is the standard stage background size before we started okay so that's Adobe Fireworks and it's a great product and we highly recommend its use let's go back to the game and we'll just have a look at the finish line sprite here. And the finish line sprite's pretty basic. We're just positioning it at a certain place on the track and it stays there. All right, the big work is all on the car. So let's click on the car. This little red car here we got off um, the internet. We found it in a yo-yo games um, forum of all places and they had a whole sprite sheet of these red cars. I think they might be from GTA or somewhere. They look a little bit familiar. Alright, with the car, let's start here. When it's clicked, we want it to go to the front and be in front of everything else on our screen. Um, we set the speed to zero. Speed is the key thing which is going to control all of this game and just wait 0.1 seconds. Put it in a certain position on the track and point it to the right because we drive around this track to the right counterclockwise. All right, um, in the forever screen then, we would just move whatever the speed's up to a certain number of steps forward to keep the gar car going forward. Okay, so uh, let's go down and just have a look at how the speed is done. When the down arrow is pressed, we change the speed by minus 0 0.4, all right? Remember, reversing for down arrow, we will have negative values in there. When the up arrow key is pressed, we change the speed by positive 0.4. Now, the car will go at a certain speed, and then you can't slow it down. Like, it doesn't slow down automatically like a real car, and that was hard to program in. Okay, so let's just um, now move those into position. Now, I've got some other stuff here I'm moving around as well, which we'll get to in a minute. So we'll just uh, put those up here. It's going to be hard to fit this all on one screen, but that's taken care of. That's the speed. The next thing we need to look at uh, down here is the turning. Let me just move this up into position here 
the steering, okay? So with the steering, when the left arrow key is pressed, we turn it, depending on the speed, multiplied by 1.5. That means that the faster you go, the tighter the turning circle, because you want to turn tight to get round corners when you're going fast, but the car oversteers, so it makes it really hard to drive. I find once I get over a speed of three, um, the car is incredibly hard to drive. All right, I'm just gonna move those out of the way. And the next thing is, in here, in this forever loop, we're gonna add some extra stuff. Okay, now, what have I got here? I seem to have lost something. I've got something wrong there, hang on. I need to slide these guys into position. That one, I think, belongs in there, and that needs to slot into there. Okay, that's how it's gonna look. All right. Let's concentrate on this forever loop uh, right here. If it's touching the green grass color, which we just got by um, getting the eyedropper and going across and dipping into our track to get that color used in fireworks, if the car is going forward, the speed's greater than one, set the speed to speed divided by 1.1. Now, any mathematician or anyone should know that if you divide by a number bigger than one, that's gonna give you a smaller answer. So that will slow the car down dramatically and keep doing it um, while it's stuck in the grass. Now, we didn't do one for when the car is going backwards because we figure you're not gonna be reversing into the grass much, so it doesn't slow down when you're actually in reverse. All right then, now we've got a few more things we need to look at here for the car. Okay then, let's have a look at brakes. Brakes are gonna operate off the space key. So when the space key is pressed, and this if-else structure here is very tricky to get right, and uh, you need to be very careful about this. So if the speed's greater than zero, which means if we're traveling in a forward direction, rather than stop the car completely, keep the game going, we just set the speed down to one, the lowest kind of whole number speed. Else, otherwise, maybe the car isn't moving at all. It could be going at zero, or it could be going less than zero, a negative number, because we're reversing at the moment. So if it's less than zero and we're reversing, then you need to set the speed to negative one, so the car will stay in reverse uh, when it slows down. Else, which will be if the speed isn't bigger than zero, if it's not less than zero, well then it must actually be equal to zero. So we don't want the car to move if it's just at zero stopped, so we just keep the speed at zero, all right? So that's basically the brake setup. All right then, let's look at how um, the variables work. If we click on variables here, you need to have a lap, lap time, lap start, and speed as your variables that you define um, for the program. All right, now let's go across here and look at how we keep track of them. When we start, we wait until it's touching the finish line, wait till the car goes forward and crosses the finish line, set the lap to zero, set your lap time to zero, and set the lap start value to work off Scratch's timer so it starts timing. Now, after that, we just keep going with a forever block. So this keeps going forever. And this is a bit hard to explain, but you need to have this not touching the finish line here. What that does is it makes sure the thing does nothing. Um, while the car is driving around the track. And it's not until you're touching the finish line again that it sets the lap time to the timer. But so we can time each lap, we need to subtract what the time was up to at the start of the lap, all right? You might have to work this out on pen and paper and think about it a bit. On the first lap, the lap start value will be zero, so it's just a timer value, but the timer doesn't reset, it just keeps going. So we set the lap start now to what the current timer was at the end of lap one, and then when we get to lap two, to get the lap two time, we'll just be subtracting the timer minus lap start, which will be our lap one time. We can find the difference and work out how long um, lap two actually took us and so on for as many laps as you want to do. All right, change lap by one here at the end just changes the lap counter to tell us how many laps we've done. So over on the right here, if you look at the game setup, um, it'll just keep track of laps, how fast you're going at the moment, the car speed, and the lap time over here on the right in the game. All right, we've got a couple more things uh, to cover, and then that will be it.
All right then, the last bit of scripting on the car is this. When it receives a message, maximum speed exceeded, the speed is dropped down to three, or if you're going in reverse and the reverse maximum speed is exceeded, it drops down to minus three. Now this is controlled by the skid sprite. So we've finished looking at all the car stuff now, so let's go across and look at the skid sprite. Okay, what the skid sprite does is, um, it hides itself and with the pen up. So it scratches drawing pen, it sets the color to black and the pen thickness to three. Now, in a forever block here, the pen is always following the car around. So go to car, makes the pen go to the car and follow it around. It points in the same direction um, as the car is. Now, if the speed of the car gets bigger than seven, we just decided seven was kind of like an impossible speed to drive at, so that would do for this. It puts the pen down for 0.1 seconds, which draws that black kind of single skid mark um, line onto the screen. Now, we found it pretty much impossible to draw dual lines next to each other to make two sets of wheels. That would have been really good, but we couldn't do it. Um, and then it broadcasts that maximum speed exceeded message, which goes back to the car, if we just jump back to the car sprite here, um, down the very bottom. So when it receives maximum speed exceeded, it'll set the car speed back down to three, kind of um, middle of the range speed. All right, back on the skid sprite, we then have an else. So um, if the speed of the car, as long as it uh, now gets checked, if it's actually um, less than minus seven, which means it could be minus eight, minus nine, minus 10, and so on, that means it's speeding up in a reverse direction too fast. So we need to slow that down. So we put the pen down again, and um, because we're going backwards, the pen kind of doesn't, leave, just leaves little skids, it doesn't leave long ones. And we broadcast reverse speed exceeded, and then that will go back to the car sprite. And on the car sprite, if we just jump back to that and go down the bottom here, on the car sprite, we receive a message that reverse speed was exceeded and it sets the speed back to minus three for your reversing. So that's kind of our speed limiting. Otherwise, the car just goes faster and faster and just gets totally out of control and way too hard to drive. So then, if we have a look at the um, car sprite script, that's where most of the work is and there's a lot here and basically what we have is we've got um, the starting off position of the car if it touches the green we've got the slowing down in the grass um, it all depends on speed you can see speed all over the place here is the variable we've got the speed limiter for reverse and forward that'll slow the car down to a speed of three if it's going too fast over here we've got when space key is pressed and all of the uh, stuff and it's very important to get this if else if else exactly correct here or it won't work there your brakes which uh, take the car right back to a speed of one and in here we've got all of the timing um, to display what lap we're on what our uh, most recent lap time was and to keep track of things all right then so just looking at the game over here uh, future expansion that we're thinking about is that we want to have multiple tracks so you can press like the T key and play maybe one of three tracks. We'll have Australia as our first track here, we'll have maybe one for Japan, one for USA and make the tracks harder. We'll have an intro screen for the whole game where you can pick which track you want to do. We're going to have damage, so we'll have a damage um, sort of counter so that if you hit that green grass too many times or your car's too damaged and the game finishes, we're going to make the race last for just 10 laps and we'll try and display a best lap time um, variable as well so that at the end of the 10 laps when it's um, up you'll be able to see what your fastest lap was and just display a game over message on the screen so we've got quite a few more things to do not sure how many tutorials it'll take or when we'll do them um, but we'll be on to that sometime so get into scratch it's great fun and um, we hope you enjoy making this car racing game the last thing we need to mention is credit where credit is due. We didn't make this game uh, originally from nothing. We went to the Scratch MIT site and had a look at some car race games and we saw this one called Awesome Car Race which was made by Spark98 and we got a lot of our ideas 
from that particular gang. So we just downloaded that and then worked from there, which is called doing a remix in Scratch. Uh, we're hoping to get this our version of the game up onto the Scratch MIT site as an upload, so you'll be able to search for it. They will probably call it um, Passy's Car Race Part 1 or something like that. Okay, so enjoy.